And that will be, go ahead and pull up the whiteboard. And that will be a question that looks something like this. You don't have to write down the question verbatim, but write down the actual, you know, gist of it. There we go. Go ahead and write that down. <coughs> the grunt bow. You got to write it down. You already put it in your notes. Where? In the 120 class? Or we haven't done it. We haven't done it yet. We're going to do it today. That was yesterday's class. But if you watched the video from yesterday's class, you would have. Yeah, that's right. You don't watch videos. What else? I actually watched it on Facebook. You did? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Who, who held a gun to your head? Who held a gun to your head to watch a video, one of my videos? You must have been sick. What? What she say? Uh, well, I'll just be like other teachers and just be monotone and you know, put you to sleep. How about that? Thank you. Yeah, never, never satisfied. All right, there we go. With a height of 75 inches, Lyndon Johnson was the tallest president in the past century. With a height of 85 inches, Shaquille O'Neal is the tallest player in the Miami blah, blah, blah basketball team. Who is relatively taller? Well, any redneck with two teeth in their head will tell you that Shaq is taller than Lyndon Johnson. I mean, that's not what the question's asking. The question is asking who is relatively taller. Who is relatively taller? That means who is taller when you compare the two samples to their own populations? What is the qualification for being president of the United States? Is it 35 or 42? I thought it was 42. 35. Is it 35? All right. It's got to be 35 years old, and you have to be a natural-born citizen and not have killed anybody or you know, done anything crazy, all right? So basically anybody that's 35 years old and a natural born citizen of the United States has the freedom to run for president of the United States, right? There's no height requirement, is there? No, because uh, James Madison, somebody looked this up, I think it was James Madison, he was 5'4". I don't know if we've got anybody that's 5'4 in the room or the three rooms, but 5'4 is not very tall. Was it James Madison? <laughs> might look it up. I'll make sure I don't give y'all any bad information because yeah, Lord knows what will happen if I do that. What? 5'4". 5'4". And the tallest president, I think, is Lyndon Johnson and tied with Lyndon Johnson. Who, was the, who do you think is the tallest president? Abraham Lincoln. You can look that up, didn't you? Trump's only an inch below. Is he? I didn't know. Well, six three, according, according to Google, he's, he's six three. All right. He don't count. He's an antichrist. All right. So you've got Lyndon Johnson. That is a big fish in a little pond. Why is he a big fish in a little pond? Because it's higher there's no height average. requirement to be president of the United States. So you don't have a bunch of tall people running for president of the United States. <laughs> Anybody look up Mike Bloomberg, see how tall he is? Anyway, but Shaquille O'Neal is a very tall person, okay? But he plays in the NBA. Now, what's the requirement to play in the NBA? You've got to be able to dribble a ball. You've got to be able to shoot a ball. You've got to be able to run. Is there a height requirement? No. No. Not necessarily. But Webb was 5'5", five, five, and he dunked, okay? So there is no requirement, but why is everybody tall? It's not a requirement, but it's a what? It's an advantage. advantage. That's why all the all the uh, caveman coaches always seek out the tall sixth graders. Okay? Why? Because they, if they're tall, they might be play what? Basketball. 
All right. So what is Shaquille O'Neal? Is he a big fish in a little pond or a little fish in a big pond? Little fish in a big pond. He's a little fish in a big pond because everybody, mostly everybody, in the <laughs> NBA is tall. But at least 6'2", I would say. Okay? I don't know. Somebody look up the average height of basketball players in the NBA. I mean, it says in, on this team, what's the average height? 72 inches or 80 inches? And what's 80? Divide 80 by 12. Dang old 84 is. Six foot is seven eight. is. What? Is that? Six foot seven is the average. Yeah, six foot seven. So he's a little fish in a big pond. So which one's taller? Well, that's why we got to use the Z score because we're comparing basketball players to presidents. So let's go ahead and I gave you all the Z score formula the other day, correct? So right. I want you to do the Z score, and we're going to do since since LBJ was a terrible press. I'm sorry. Since he was a Democrat, we will do him in blue. And that will be Z sub LBJ is equal to X. What is his X? How tall was Lyndon Johnson? 75? 75 inches. Minus, what is the president's <laughs> mean? 71.5? Yeah. Over 2.1. Now, I want somebody to... I want somebody to uh, crank that out and tell me what you get for a Z score. 1.67. Okay, 1.67. So I'm going to plot that. 1.67, there's 1.5. 1.75 would be there. So 1.67, I'm going to put right there and draw a line. And I'm going to draw LBJ. And I'm going to draw an arrow. So there is 1.67. Now let's do Shaq. Shaq went to LSU, so we'll use this magenta. It's about the closest thing. The thing says purple, but I don't think that's purple. That's magenta. Yeah. So we'll go with magenta. So Shaq, well, that's highlight. That's really not what you want. Let's try that again. There we go. So the Z score for Shaq is going to equal, what's, how tall is Shaq? 85. And we got a minus, the mean for 80, thank you. Takes you a while to find it, this paragraph. And 3.3. Now I need somebody to crank that out. 1.5 rounded. 1.5, give me two. Well, Z scores are ready One. to two. One. Okay, so 1.51, I'm going to exaggerate a little bit. There it is right there. And that's Shaq. So who is relatively taller? LBJ, because he's further out. Remember the empirical rule. What is this right here? This is unusual. This is unusual. This is outlier. This is outlier. So wouldn't it stand to reason that the closer you are to unusual and outlier, the more ER you are, the more taller, or whatever. The taller you are, the wider you are, the thinner you are, the heavier you are, whatever, smarter you are, whatever the ER is, if you're closer to the unusual or to the outlier, then that means you're that, you're relatively ER. Whatever in this case, the ER is what? Taller. That's how you use the Z score when you're using two things. I'd like to put that on the test, but I can't because that's one of the best problems that you use. And we had it in a book, and when we have something good at Tri-County Tech, what do we do? We get rid of it. We don't use it. We put it on posters. Huh? We put it on posters. 
Yeah. In fact, I got my faculty staff development day email, and we have a whole half a day on posters. But guess how much we have technology in the classroom? One hour. One hour technology in the classroom, but we have a half a day to look at people's posters. Because logic. <laughs> and of course, I'm not going. My, my, my department head knows I'm not going to go because I think it's the dumbest thing in the world. But anyway, that's just my own opinion. All right, let's get rid of that. That's your, you still have Monday to send in questions with Z-scores, okay? I realize I have questions today, but I'm trying to give y'all a day to work on homework and the test when I'm not going to be here instead of having to try to do everything else. So we're going to move to the test. So I'm going to pull up my handy dandy test. If I can find my test. What are you laughing at? You laugh at everything I pull up. All right, let's go to Course Tools, Assignment Manager, and I'm going to pull up your test, and it will look like well. I, oh, I need to, there we go. Show all. There we go. Well, I'll just show test. There it is. It's got a check beside it. I mean, it's a sign. And golly, it tells you the dates, too. Wow. It's amazing how things fall together. All right, let's do preview. All the hammies, all the emails I've got. What's, what's the test? What do you think this going to be? What do you think this? Just do the homework. Quit worrying about it. <laughs> all right, when does homework terminate? Dave's in Delta. Okay, it's not supposed to clump them up like that. I think it does. Does it clump it up on y'all's test? Oh, y'all haven't taken the test yet. So. Okay, several forms. How is how is my test counted per unit? Highest grade and drop below. Takes highest grade. Bravo. There we go. Assume that a test score is normally distributed. What does that mean when you see normally distributed with a standard deviation? What does that mean? Draw the damn curve. That's what it means. So let's draw it. I can't bring it in, so I'm going to have to draw it because I'm on transparency. Use the empirical rule. Nobody ever calls it that. Use the empirical rule to find the following quantities. So, go ahead and do that. Draw a picture. Put the mean in the middle. So the mean is 110, so that means 130, 150, and 170. Check my math, I suck at it. This would be 90, this would be 70, this would be 50, I think. Let's go ahead and fill out the 0 0.15, 2.35, 13.5, 34, 34, 13.5, 2.35, and 0.15. And yes, you should be able to fill it out just like that without going, uh, uh, uh. Now the best thing to do is like Miss Jeter did. Print it out. Yeah, print it out. Have you done yours? No, I didn't. No, hell to the no. She's not going to do it. I did it on my mouth. Ah, whatever. All right, so where is 110? Right, right in the middle. So, percentage of scores less than 110 is what? 50%. Now, if you can't understand that, then add them up, okay? But 110, the middle is 50%. That's halfway, okay? Percentage of scores greater than 130. 
So what do you do? You add those up. Add, add those up, yeah. So 13.5 and 2.5 is 16%. The percentage of scores between 70 <coughs> and 130. What do you do? You add them up. Add them. So 34 and 34 is 68, 68 and 13.5, 81.5, I have no idea. Somebody tell me. Yeah. And that's your answers. That's not hard if you know the empirical rule. And I've been teaching the empirical rule for the last week at least. So that's 50%. Sixteen percent and eighty one point five. And we'll check that one. You can't do that on the test, but we can do it because I have to show students that I actually know what I'm doing. There we go. Because they get the wrong answer and they think they're right. Next. All right, look at this one. says use the table to find the standard score and percentile. Uh, data value 2.6 standard deviation below the mean. Okay. Okay, what does standard score mean? A Z score. A Z score. Okay, so 2.6 would be right here. Negative 2.6. I'm thinking below, thank you. Negative below because it says below. Okay. And now we have to read. Now, there's another way you can do this on your calculator. You want to know the percentage at 2.6. So negative, that's one, two, three. Negative 2.6 is right in here. Everybody with me? Okay, I may be off a little bit, but that's 2.6. They want to know the percent Below, well, it says, okay, at in the percentile. They want to know, I guess, this percent right here. Because very rarely do they want to know the right side unless they say greater than. So you've got to go, this is negative infinity right here. Negative infinity, which is negative 9999. So you take your handy dandy calculator. Go ahead and pull up, get out your handy dandy calculator. I'm going to pull it up. 103 always gets me because it does this, and 120 don't, and I always forget to do this, so it's my bad. But I'm going to show you the easy way to do it. You take your handy-dandy calculator, and you hit second, bars, and I think it's normal CDF, I think. Yeah, it's normal. Thank you. And mm -hmm. lower would be negative 9999, because we read from left to what? Right. Upper is, what did we say it was, 1 point, 2 point, negative 2 point what? 2 point what? Negative 2.6. Thank you. And hit paste and enter. Now, some of you may have an old calculator, and that's the way you would type it in. You'd see, you'd do normal CDF, and it would put parentheses, and you'd put negative 9999, comma, negative 2.67, and use this negative down here. Okay? And your answer is 0%, or 0.46%. So... 0 0.0047, 0 0.0047, and that would be right here, 0 0.0047. All right, what about the second one? 1 1.8, 1 1.8, we'll do that in blue. Negative 1.8 would be right about there. Well, that sucks. It's hard to draw with a mouse, unless you think you can do it. So 1.8, negative 1.8 would be right there. 
So now you do negative 9999 to negative 1.8. So hopefully I've shown you a quicker way than using the table because the table just is too slow. I mean, you can still pull up the table and look up the negative 1.8 and somebody tell me, give me four digits. 2.6, what is it? Or 0 0.0026 or what is it? 0 0.026, somewhere around there. Okay, I'll do it myself. Mm -hmm. Second, enter, and I'm going to put in negative 1.8 and enter. I got, okay, I was off. 0 0.035, 0 0.0359, 0 0.0359. The standard score uh, 1.2 above the mean. We'll do that in red. So where is 1.2? Well, there's one, there's two. 1.2 would be right in here. So they want to know this. So you know this is 50. This is what? 84? So I'd say it's going to be around 85%, something like that. But there's your z-score of 1.2. So negative 9999 to positive 1.2. Somebody give me those four digits. 0 0.8849. 0 0.8849. Yep. So 1.2, 0.8849. And you feel good about yourself. I ain't worried about it because I've got it right. They probably they probably don't like the way I rounded. Well, hell, they didn't even say what to round it to, so I don't know what to round it to. I hate this book. No, I can't submit it, so we're just going to have to keep going. Remember that number, number five. Okay, the most. this is the most missed bonus question. Yeah, go ahead and put D. I am a normal. Determine whether the following variable is qualitative or quantitative. Salaries of NBCA, NBA basketball players. It's quantitative. Okay, so where's quantitative? It's either going to be this one or this one. Because they are numerical categories. Negative 2.6. Will you show me? Next. Why does Hubert not entertain extra credit at the end of the semester? I was in the wrong one. So like for the Bravo first would be good, but yeah. D so is in Delta. And then pay. Yeah, I mean. Next. Are y'all trying to communicate with me? Oh yeah, that's right. Y'all don't communicate with me. That's fine. You're sending Morse code. Okay. Just the That's all right. I heard Miss uh, Jeter answering some questions, but I know damn well they're not going to ask me anything. So if you miss a question on a test and you believe it is correct, what do you do? Yeah. I like send several emails to Hubert with the last one saying hello. Hello. What do I tell y'all if I don't respond to your email? What does that usually mean? That we suck. Yeah, that I've already covered it and you didn't listen. Okay? And I've told you, when you have a question, you see me after class. This is a stupid question. Anyway. What is a Z-score? How do you find the Z-score of a particular data? Does somebody tell me what the Z-score is. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to erase this. And where is x minus x bar over standard deviation? Well, you know it's not D, so let's just go ahead and mark D off. I'm not going to read all those definitions. I'm going to let you all pick that out. Data value, no. So the only two that you could answer for part B is A or B. B is in Bravo. Thank you. So which one is the answer up here? B. 
Uh, I'm looking over. Yep, B is in Bravo. Oh, we didn't check it. Let's check it and make sure. Because the way they word these daggum definitions, you got to be a Philadelphia lawyer to understand them. Does Hubert replace your lowest test grade with your final exam grade? No. Use the frequency table for the ages, recent, blah, 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 to construct the corresponding histogram. So go to your Excel spreadsheet. And I'm just going to do a dot plot because that's all you need to see what it looks like. So I'm going to highlight this. And I'm going to insert. And I'm going to do a, a dot plot. So it looks like up, then what? Down. So it looks kind of like a skewed left. No, it's kind of normal distribution. It's skewed right. Like, yeah, it's a little bit skewed right. A little bit. But they probably ask if it's a normal distribution. And it does look kind of like one. So I don't know what they're going to ask, but that's what it looks like. Let's see what they're, let's see what they're, uh, So which one does it look like? D is in delta. E. I think y'all said delta. Okay. Next. Yep. If a student does not complete homework or test, what grade will be recorded for that assignment? Zero. This is what the chair oh. had said. She didn't know that at the end of the semester. The histogram in the figure shows time, blah, 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 draw a smooth curve that captures the important features, then classify the distribution, number of peaks, symmetry, and skewness. So let's take our handy dandy uh, pen and. It's B. That's what it looks like. B. So it looks like B is in Bravo. And then they're going to yeah. ask you some dumb questions about it because one of the questions don't make sense but I think it's this one I'm not sure I'm trying to get down there the distribution I don't know if you want to say it has two peaks I think it has one it has but one it, it, I'm gonna say one I don't it is not symmetric and has moderate to large variation. That would be my answer, but I've oftentimes answered some of these weird questions and got them wrong. So, see? And I bet you a dollar they want that to be two because it's not symmetric. Let's see if small. Nope. They want you to say two here. I knew that's what they were wanting. Now, I really. Hold on. Yep. I don't consider this a peak. Okay. But in their <laughs> definitions, this is a peak and that's a peak. So when you answer this question, just say two. <clears throat> Next. If you look at your overall grade one day and it has decreased from several days ago, what has happened? <laughs> I didn't realize that it made my grade go down. That's what I'm told at the end of the semester. A normal distribution of heights, blah, 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 has a mean of blah, 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 and standard deviation, which means draw the damn curve. That's what it means. Let's go ahead and do that. Then we'll do the rest of the problem. And then they want you to find the z-scores. I'm sorry. Standard scores. Please find the standard scores.
So I'm going to draw the Five, 2.35, 13.5, 34, 34, 13.5, 2.35, and 0.15. And it says uh, 68.2, 68.2, be 72.2, and 76.2. And 80.2, y'all check my math. I ain't going to be able to do this. I'm going to tell you, that'd be 64.2, I guess. 60.2 and 56.2, y'all check me. You're right. All right. Now, it says 62.2 inches. Well, we don't have 62.2 inches, so we're going to have to change it to a Z-score. Here's 62.2 inches. Minus 68.2 divided by 4, is it 4? All right, somebody give me that Z-score. And give me two digits because Z-scores are at two digits. Negative 1.5. Negative 1.5. So now, now they say the standard score in the percentile. So here's negative infinity which you can't type in negative infinity. So you type in negative nine, nine, at least three, at least three nines. You can put five if you want to. And somebody give me negative nine, 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 nine to negive 1.5. Give me four uh, six point, six point six. No, you've got, you've got, stand, you've got to change uh, it into decimal. That's scientific notation, please. Negative 1.5, yes. I'm sorry? 0 0.0668. Everybody get that? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Now, let's do 74.2. I'll be right up in here. We'll do that in blue. 74.2. Goes right in here. 74.2 minus 68.8 or 2 over 4. Well, 74 minus 68, isn't that 6? 1.5, yeah. So 1.5, and somebody go from negative infinity to 1.5. Point what? 9331. 1.5.9331, yeah. 331. Now let's make another note. This is number 16. I have a feeling, <laughs> since this book does everything bass accurate from all other, it's from all other, I think what they may be doing, they may be changing this to 93.31. That's the way I was making you do it in the homework. What? That's the way they're making you do it in the homework section of it. I figured they do it past accurate. Six point six eight. Do you know how many digits they want? No. I was just using the chart it provides. It was basically just you didn't have to calculate it. Yeah. I don't use the chart because that'd take another day to explain how to use the chart. And it's easier just to show people, especially with people that are on the calculator drill team. If you can teach them how to depend on their calculator a little bit more, they love it. So, anyway, next one, 64.2. Now, you could say 13.5 and 2.5 is what? 16%. But since they're asking you for Z-scores, Z-scores are more detailed than the empirical rule. But you know it's going to be around 16% because you can read 13.5. But... Somebody take 64.2 divided uh, minus 68.2 divided by 4. It's going to be negative 1. I mean, I know Maybe, that. Yeah. Because, negative 1, yeah. And it's going to be around 16, but somebody give me the actual numbers. 
15.87 percent. Okay. And the last one, 70.2. Well, I don't got it, so I'm going to let y'all do it. Was well, 70.2 minus 68.2, is that one? Uh, I'm sorry, 0. 0.5? Yes. So 0. 0.5, and somebody do negative 9999 to 0. 0.5. 69.15%. And that's how you do that one. Check answer. Yeah, there's a rounding error. They will probably want you to say 6.793, but we'll check it when we get finished to see what they want. Because they don't, they sure as hell don't tell you. And I guess you're just supposed to, let's see. See, they're, they're doing it exactly, they're taking it to two digits, so I don't know. We'll just see. Next, I hate this book. <laughs> Scores on the quantitative portion of exam have a mean of 551 and a standard deviation of 141. Draw the what? Draw the picture. That's another... Um, <laughs> That's another Z score. We're going to move on. I'm going to try to show you what the rest of the test does. Okay. Uh, computer randomly selects 600 names from a list of registered voters. Okay. Uh, those selected are surveyed to predict who the election for mayor. Okay. You know it's not random. And you know it's not simple random. Or it's not random and it's not systematic. Why? There's no pattern. So it's either stratified or it's convenience. Okay, well, it's randomly selects. But see, they don't give you, they can't be systematic because they don't give you the total number of registered voters. I'd say stratified. And I'm probably going to get it wrong. Yeah. I get, they're calling it systematic. I guarantee you that's what they're doing. No, nope. I, hell, I don't know what it is. It's probably the one I told you it wasn't. No, probably simple. I disagree with that because you don't know how many people are in the registered voters. Do you see what I'm saying? If there was yes. if there was 1,200 people in registered voters, then is that a random sample? I don't think so. No. Oh, I see. There it is right here. I didn't read it. There it is right there. Randomly selects. Mm -hmm. I still think they ought to give you at least, you know, 600 out of 30,000. Or 600 out of 50,000, or 600 out of 5,000. I think we ought to at least say that. Okay, my bad on that one. Which one has the larger variation? Okay, this is normal. I would say this one, but I'll probably get it wrong too. It says, oh, you got. The normal distributions are what? B and what? C. Where C, oh, st larger standard deviation, that's the larger spread. I thought it was asking for the larger variation. Okay, whatever. So B is the larger spread. Next, let's check it. Yep. <coughs> Scores on psychology exam were normally distributed with a mean of 51. The standard score, the Z-score, that's another Z-score. You can write that down right quick. 51 and 6. What is the standard score of 61? What is the Z-score? What are the directions for Skyping in the class? Five, Five minutes. minutes before class. Uh, not 20 minutes before class. Uh, that's another Z score, and that's another communication, and this is the second most missed question out of my bonus questions, the second most missed. That one's stupid. I know. I what kind of correlation we got here? There's a strong negative correlation. Yeah. Dang old line. Let's put a line there. Dang old. There you go. All right. The heavier a car gets, the least what? Yeah, that's mine. 
Gas mileage. So which one says that? Get lower gas mileage. Overall grade is what you hit on your grade book to see what your grade is at the end of the semester. Instead of calling me up and saying what? What's my grade? What's my score? Yeah. These are questions. Okay, we went over one of these in class. They give you the range or the classes, and you do the what? Frequency, that's the head count. How many 80s do you have? How many 90s do you have? Put them in order, and then do the relative frequency, and then the cumulative. So if that's two, you're going to start with two right here. If that's four, that's going to be a six. If that's seven, that's going to be a 13. You just add them. Remember me telling you the cumulative frequency is useless? I don't know why they put it on here, but it's useless. I'm mainly concerned with these two. Make sure you can do the frequency and the relative frequency. Relative frequency is a 25-cent word for what? Percent. And uh, decreases a zero, makes your grade decrease. And even if I skip that many questions and have no idea on five or six questions, I still made an 83. Now, which questions? Number five? Uh, Let's see what they wanted. One message coming in on secure channel. Five minutes before class, not 15. Now, what did, what did we, okay, yeah, they want you to type in the percent. So mine are going to be, see, so you need to type in the percent and take it to two digits. Take it to two digits. What's the other one? What was the other one? That, is it this one, 16? No. Oh, my gosh. Really? Now, this would be a good challenge question. You come to me after class and say, Hubert, I need you to change this. Okay, I'll change it because that is ridiculous. Okay? They should have a tolerance there, especially when they don't give you any what? Direction. They don't give you any directions. They need a poster. <laughs> yeah, that's what they need. Any questions on this? No. All right, now that I have given you the test, Okay, let's look right quick. Okay, look here. I'm going to show you all a trick. Now when you hit assignments, and you go down to, to look at there. For all you hammies that have been worrying about when to turn in your homework, there you go. Now you can start doing your homework. And look at there. That gives you the time limit. Gives you how many exact, how many attempts you have. Gives you the due date. Isn't it something how Hubert just answers all your questions when you need to know the answer? Isn't it something? That's your call. No, you're supposed to run around the second week of class and have a heart attack. That's what you're supposed to do.